The film starts at a cemetery in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. A man named Jose Angelo is burying the coffin of his daughter, Pia Angelo. When he got home, Jose kept a photo, keys, and other items in a red wallet. But suddenly, the police came to raid Jose's house. He tried to escape but the police chased him. The police shot him in the leg until he was cornered. Then, he throws his precious wallet in the garbage truck. Later, the truck arrived at the garbage dump. A scavenger boy named Rafael finds the wallet that was thrown away by Jose. While resting, Rafael shares some of the money he found with his friend, Gardo. In that wallet, Rafael also found an ID card, lottery, a key, and other items. While elsewhere, Jose is being interrogated about the items inside of the wallet he threw away. But Jose did not want to reveal it and finally, the police finished him off. At the garbage dump, Rafael wants to stop by the church for a while. He met his tutor, Olivia. Then, Gardo caught up with him. He gave the money he had earned earlier to buy chicken, so they could have a good meal tonight. Moments later, the police, led by Frederico, came to the dump to look for Jose's missing wallet. Frederico met with Gardo, who at that time asked to be photographed. Gardo asked why so many policemen had come. Then, Frederico explained that they were looking for a lost wallet. The policeman also said that the wallet was of very important evidence. Frederico offers some money if anyone finds the wallet. He then asked their names. Gardo introduced himself as well as Rafael. In the evening, Gardo advises Rafael to hand over the red wallet immediately so they can get a reward. But Rafael refused, he was sure that in the wallet there must be something valuable. Because of that, the police were willing to come to the garbage dump. According to him, the longer the wallet is gone, the higher the fee will be. Then, Rafael invites Gardo to meet his old friend. Rafael and Gardo go into a rundown sewer. Inside, they meet a man named Gabriel. Rafael asks Gabriel for help to find the valuable thing in the wallet. Gabriel showed them the key from inside the wallet and that was probably what the police were looking for. Gabriel was willing to find out about the key if Rafael would share their prize equally. Rafael finally agreed. The next day, the three of them took a train to reach a city. They passed through the passage to a place, but their path was blocked by the thugs who controlled the area. Having no money, Gabriel handed over his necklace so they were allowed to pass. They arrived at the end of the hall and apparently, the road was a passage to a train station. Gabriel said that the key from the wallet was probably the key to the locker at the station. They intended to open the locker, but there was a policeman on duty. Gardo took the initiative to distract the police and pretended to be a pickpocket. The police started chasing him. Meanwhile, Gabriel and Raphael opened the locker with the key. Inside, they found a white envelope. They immediately ran away, followed by the curious slackers. They eventually managed to flee and reunite on the train. Gardo examines the envelope they received. The envelope was addressed to a prisoner named Joao Clemente. They discovered letters and photographs of Jose Angelo and his daughter as well. There are hidden numbers behind the photo. Long story short, they had arrived at the house of a priest, Juilliard. Secretly, they used Pastor Juilliard's computer and looked up Joao Clemente's profile. While in the living room, Gabriel tried to distract Juilliard and Olivia. From Google, it is known that Joao Clemente is a former lawyer who was later imprisoned for some reason. Rafael then prints information about the man and they run away from there. While at the dump, Frederico continues his search. He ordered the scavengers to look for the lost wallet, but the wallet was never found. Frederico asks a boy about the Rafael and Gardo, but the boy says that they didn't come to work today. In the evening, Rafael plans to meet Joao Clemente the next day. But unexpectedly, the police kidnapped Rafael and took him away from there. Gardo and Gabriel, who knew about it, immediately reported it to priest Juilliard. Meanwhile, on a quiet street, Rafael is taken out of the car and his head is banged against the car. The police asked Rafael to show him where the wallet was. But Rafael was silent and didn't want to speak. Frederico told his members to cover Rafael's head and then put him in the car. His hands and feet were tied. The police immediately drove the car recklessly which made Rafael stumbled in it. Elsewhere, Juilliard and Gardo come to the police station. They search for Rafael but the police on duty said no children were there. Meanwhile, in the car with Frederico, Rafael admits that he found the wallet. Frederico then asked what was inside of the wallet. But Rafael just kept quiet and didn't want to tell him. 
Because of that, Raphael was put in the trunk of the car and again, the police took his car wildly until Raphael was in pain. While at home, Juilliard and Gardo return empty-handed. They fail to find Raphael. Juilliard can only pray. May God protect Raphael. At a quiet crossroads, Raphael is dropped off by Frederico. He ordered his man to kill Raphael. After that, Frederico left that place. One of the police officers points his gun and prepares to shot Raphael. But the cop didn't have the heart to do it, so he let Raphael live and left the place. The next day, the residents found Raphael was dying. The boy was carried on a stretcher and taken home to Pastor Juilliard. The wounds on Raphael's body began to be treated. After that, Gabriel asked if Raphael would give up. But Raphael said that he would not give up until he died. In the evening, Olivia comes home and she is surprised to see Raphael and his friends at her house. Gardo explains that Raphael has just been beaten up by the police and he needs justice. Gardo asks Olivia to see a lawyer tomorrow, which is his own grandfather. After that, Raphael said that he remembered something. The police had previously spoken of a man named Santos. Gabriel said that he knew someone named Santos. He is a dirty politician who wants to be the mayor of the city. Santos lives in an area near the coast. The next day, Rafael and Gabriel go to Santos' house. Meanwhile Gardo and Olivia set off for the prison. Long story short, Gardo and Olivia arrive at the prison. The officer forbade Gardo to enter, because he was still a child. But Gardo said that he wanted to visit his grandfather. Finally, the officer allowed it. They were brought in and met someone who turned out to be Joao Clemente. Gardo gave the last message from Jose Angelo that he still remembers. In the letter, Jose expressed his longing for his uncle, Joao Clemente. Jose also said that the person who imprisoned Joao would soon be caught. Jose promises that Santos will finish. Jose said that Joao's fight against corruption would continue. He says if the message reaches him, it means Jose is dead. At the end of his letter, Jose apologized if he had been a burden to Joao Clemente. Elsewhere, at Santos' house, Rafael and Gabriel have arrived there. They met a gardener. There, there were many security guards standing guard. Gabriel asks why the Santos' house is so tightly guarded. The gardener said that Santos had just lost a valuable item. Someone named Jose Angelo had stolen 10 million reals and brought other important items. The gardener told the chronology. One day, Santos had a meeting at his house about his candidacy for mayor. Santos bribed the official to get him elected. Then, Jose is entrusted with keeping Santos' money and important books in a secret room. But in the evening, Jose accidentally breaks Santos' refrigerator and it no longer works. Jose also suggested replacing the refrigerator with a new one. Later, Jose took action to steal the money as well as the book list of people who had received bribes from Santos. Jose put all the money in the refrigerator, then he paid a courier to deliver the broken refrigerator to his house. That's the reason why Jose is so wanted by the police. Back in the present, Gardo tells Joao about the numbers behind Jose's photo. Joao said he knew about the numbers, which were a secret code from Jose. To solve it, Joao needed a Bible. But the guard did not allow it because the visiting hours were up. The guard promised to give Gardo the Bible if he returned the next day. Joao left his last message to Gardo that he was sure that Jose's codes would be solved. Gardo only needs to sort the verses and numbers in the Bible, then the code will be solved. Gardo then exits the cell and intends to go home, but an officer named Marco stops him. He demanded a ransom of 1,000 reals if Gardo wanted Joao Clemente's Bible. Shortly, they all arrived home. Olivia asks Rafael and his friends why they are doing all this. Rafael says this is all to uncover the truth. Then, Olivia offered them to make a record. They are ready too. Then, the recording was made. In the video, they told all the incidents they had experienced, such as Rafael being beaten by the police. Meanwhile, Frederico received a call from Santos. He wanted his books and money to be found soon. Santos ordered Federico to destroy the residence of Rafael and his friends. Moments later, the police came to raid Olivia's residence. Federico stole the wallet he had been looking for, but it wasn't there. Federico then took Olivia for safekeeping. All residential areas were burned by the police. Rafael and Gardo could only watch their house disappear from a distance. Then, they decided to return to the city. They intend to take the Bible from Marco. But they don't know how, because they don't have money. On the way home, they saw residents who were victims of the fire. Residents flocked to flee to the church. 
Gabriel entered Juilliard's room and took the priest's money. When Juilliard returned to his room, he saw that the money was gone. Gabriel left a piece of paper with his name on it with a sad face on it. Gabriel returns and gives the stolen money to Raphael, then they use the money to redeem the Bible from Marco. The next day, Raphael drew up a well-thought-out plan for Gardo. Then they left. Gardo meets Marco at a restaurant to redeem his Bible, but it turns out that Marco knows their plan and he takes Gardo into custody. They are hiding somewhere. Starving, Gardo went out for a while to look for food. That night, Raphael and Gabriel try to crack the codes given by Jose. The numbers lead to a verse from the Bible which then leads them to some animal names. After being matched with animal posters, they got a phone number. While at the party, Gardo, who was looking for food in the trash, was approached by a woman. Not long after, the police came on patrol. Gardo immediately left from there and invited his friends to run away. And when the police arrived, Gardo and his friends were gone. They were then led by the woman Gardo had met. The woman took them to the motorcycle taxi base and they immediately fled from there. In the previous place, Frederico found Raphael's hiding place. He looked at the numbers previously written by Raphael. Frederico then dialed the number. While elsewhere, on the side of the road, Raphael stopped for a moment to call the same number. The number turned out to be a number referring to a cemetery place called St. Francis. Raphael and his friends rushed towards the cemetery. Arriving there, Raphael saw the last clue from Jose. The clue is in the form of a calendar marked on the sixth month of the 17th. Then, Raphael searches for the grave associated with that number. While outside the fence, it seemed that Frederico had arrived at that place as well. While inside, Raphael has found the same grave with the calendar clues. The grave is numbered 17 in block 6. The grave is named Pia Angelo, who is Jose Angelo's daughter. Suddenly, a girl appeared from behind. That girl is Pia Angelo. Pia said she was waiting for her father's arrival. Seeing Pia who was still alive, made Raphael even more curious and wondering. What is in the tomb? Then, Raphael left for a while to look for his friends. But when he returns, Raphael sees that his friends have been captured by Federico. They were ordered to dismantle Pia's grave. Therefore, they took the coffin out of the grave. And it turns out, the chest contains money that has been hidden by Jose. Then Federico called Santos. He reported that the money in his book had been found. But from behind, Pia brought the concrete and dropped it right on Federico's head. Raphael takes Federico's gun and points it, but he doesn't kill him. After that, they return to the garbage dump. Raphael and Gardo went to high ground, while Gabriel and Pia went to Juilliard's house. Gabriel returned Juilliard's money that he had stolen. When he returned, there was a paper with a picture of joy left by Gabriel. He also left some money in Juilliard's drawer. Then, they handed out the money they got and squandered it in the air. While downstairs, scavengers began to arrive to scavenge the fallen money. The four of them rented a car and left the garbage dump. At church, Olivia returns home and asks Juilliard how the kids are. He shows the picture left by Gabriel. The picture shows that the children are happy. In addition, Olivia also brought something. Olivia brought a memory card containing a recording of the confession of Raphael and his friends, then upload the video on the internet so that people would know the rottenness of Santos and the police. Olivia also listed people who had accepted bribes from Santos. A few days later, on a distant beach, Pia is seen watching the news on TV. He saw Santos arrested for bribery. The police involved were also arrested. The video confession of Raphael and his friends has gone viral everywhere. Finally, the truth was revealed. Raphael, Gardo, Gabriel and Pia finally live happily.